The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. <clears throat> Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the ABPN October Policy Webinar on Leveraging Public-Private Collaboration Opportunities for Social Innovation in Cities. My name is Pat Sian, and I am the Asia Policy Forum Director at the Asian Venture Philanthropy Network, AVPN. We are a unique funders network committed to building a high impact philanthropy and social investment community across Asia. Currently, we have over 500 members across 29 countries. Our policy engagement platform, Asia Policy Forum, looks to bring a policy perspective to further advance the work that our members and stakeholders are doing. Today, we are very pleased to bring one of our members based in Taiwan to our webinar today. Representing KPMG Taiwan, we have Dr. Niven Huang, General Manager of KPMG Sustainability Consulting and the Regional Leader of KPMG Sustainability Services in Asia Pacific. He will share with us KPMG Taiwan's initiative to support the development of a social innovation ecosystem in Taiwan in partnership with the Taipei city government. Before we proceed, a few housekeeping instructions, please. We will not be taking any questions during the presentation, but we'll be answering questions from the floor after the presentation is completed. Please use the console to type in your questions during the webinar, and I will raise the questions to our speakers when the presentation is over. If you have further questions that are not answered by the end of the webinar, please email them to us at policy at avpn.asia. Before we begin and turn the uh, floor over to Dr. Huang, I would like to also make a brief announcement on behalf of AVPN's policy platform. The Asia Policy Forum is starting work to develop a well-curated database of policy initiatives that informs and lists national, state, and municipal level policy developments that affect the social economy. We would like to invite everyone that is on this webinar today to write to us if there are national, state, or municipal level policy developments that will be encouraged or advanced by its interaction with AVPN members, please write to us at policy at avpn.asia if there are such policy developments which will be important for us to know about. At this point, I'd like to also mention that AVPN's signature event in India the AVPN India Summit will also be held in New Delhi on the 6th of December. We will precede the AVPN India Summit with a policy forum that is a closed door event by invitation only on the 5th of December, one day before, in New Delhi, hosted by the U Chicago Center. If you have any interest in this event, please go to our website at india2018.avpn.asia and register your interest there. You may also write to us at policy at avpn.asia if you have further questions about our activities in India. At this point, I would like to turn the floor over to Dr. Niven Huang so that he can share with you the work that KPMG Taiwan is doing in driving social innovation through public public-private collaboration with the Taipei city government. Dr. Huang, I will turn the presentation control over to you now. Hello, good afternoon. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. We can hear you now, Dr. Huang. Thank you, Passion. Uh, it's uh, uh, my great pleasure to uh, share with our case 
share with all of you our case about uh, the uh, social enterprise and social innovation for central government and city government here in Taipei and in Taiwan. My name is Niven Huang. Uh, so you all have already known quite well, KPMG is a professional organization. Uh, as an accounting firm, actually we provide uh, quite diversified services to our client, and whether that is a big company or small and medium-sized companies. Uh, we provide accounting audit, tasks, advisory service, and also uh, legal uh, advisory. And under the advisory service, we have uh, 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 service lines is related to uh, sustainability, uh, consisting of climate change, social enterprise, uh, CSR, corporate social responsibility, and also the sustainable finance that is strongly focused on the financial sector. And the last one is, uh, I think that as every PN also quite in interested in explore uh, the, uh, the the tool guy or the methodology that is uh, related to uh, the impact assessment. So we develop uh, and utilize uh, several uh, tools uh, to our client, no matter they are companies or nonprofit organization. Uh, one tool is called social return on investment. So that is the focus on the uh, the social programs, the investment, community investments, and the outcome evaluation. And then, then the another tool is uh, we call it a true value uh, that provided to uh, the companies or some project base to evaluate. Uh, the stakeholder change uh, followed by the final outcome evaluation. Uh, the, this, the next slide. Okay, this is my background. Uh, Actually, uh, my background uh, is in the environmental engineering. So I'm this something like uh, the environmental guy. Uh, in 1997, I uh, transferred my professional background from environmental engineering to corporate sustainability. Uh, up to now, uh, I'm also sit in the judge panel of uh, responsible enterprise uh, the, this is a war for responsible enterprise in Asia. So uh, get in touch with a lot of big companies, more medium size in Asia for corporate social responsibility. And uh, yeah, during uh, 2012 to 2015, I was the uh, chairman of the advisory board of one nonprofit organization from financial sector. It's called uh, Association of Sustainable and Responsible Investment in Asia. This is based in Hong Kong. And I'm also the uh, MBA professor. So in the last 10 years, uh, get along with a lot of uh, young uh, talents and, and then the social uh, entrepreneurs, because they pay attention, a lot of attention on social and environmental problems, try to find its goal, uh, the innovative way uh, for having the solution to work out uh, the sustainability challenges in Taiwan. And uh, <clears throat> now I'm the regional leader of uh, KPMG Sustainability Office in Asia Pacific, so covering uh, the country from Australia, New Zealand uh, to uh, China, Korea, and Japan. Social enterprise actually in the last five years become a quite uh, emergence, new trend and quite hot issues, uh, no matter that is in Europe or Asia. Uh, because, you know, if we look at the, uh, the, the, the more and more pressing sustainability challenges, uh, we try to motivate the government to put more uh, efforts 
and working out the sustainability challenge or try to uh, mobilize the, the big company uh, to invest in the community or uh, the social development by delivering their more sustainable product and service. But actually, uh, it's still a lot of barrier and dilemma for having uh, the scale up uh, momentum from uh, uh, the policy, uh, from, from the public sector and, and, and the private sector. So social enterprise, social innovation has been expected as might be a, another uh, quite influential and long-term uh, real impact to uh, the social and society and environment. So social enterprise, it can be profit or nonprofit organization, but you know, via a business model by delivering their uh, purpose or value driven product or service uh, to uh, their consumer or to the market, uh, but eventually it can generate uh, the positive impact to the society and the environment. Uh, <clears throat> social enterprise, uh, it's really important to look at how you design your product and service, how you design your business model, where is the product from, where is money goes, what is the final uh, change or outcome has been uh, resulted. Social innovation is a little bit different from uh, social enterprise because according to the social innovation definition, actually it should consist of several other elements, for example, like science, technology, and much more stakeholder partnership in the business model and product service design and the operation of an enterprise by leveraging much more maximizing the partnership with different stakeholder uh, to create a more sustainable lifestyle. KPMG is a prof professional organization like I just mentioned at the very beginning. In our network, what we have, we have a lot of uh, professional person. We do have accounting, tax, legal, and advisory capability for supporting different kind of uh, business uh, to upgrade and to enhance their business operation performance. And we also have quite diversified clients from business, different sector, different sizes. And within our network, financial community is a very important key stakeholder. They provide financial instruments, they provide capital, they provide investment, evaluation, et cetera, to our clients. And KPMG, because our outstanding reputation, we do have a lot of research outcome. So through our thought leadership, we can deliver a quite clear messages that we can make a difference by doing the business in a much more innovative way. So how we can utilize our network resources to make something happen that never happened before. Since 2013, based on our existing capacity and resources, we think that if KPMG can play a very important louder voice for calling social enterprise, social innovation to the society at large and try to mobilize the partnership with quite diversified stakeholder for our sustainability challenges, that might be a very, very positive social impact. So since 2013, we do have an annual social enterprise forum, now might be changed to social 
Innovation Forum. So the first forum was held in 2013. We engaged policymaker, the key and important political leaders in local markets, big companies, opinion leaders, and we have the whole day program to have a brainstorming how we can partnership to each other to bring the awareness that we need to make things different for our pressing social and environmental challenge. So in the first social enterprise forum, we have a quite high consensus from different stakeholders. In Taiwan, we need to build up the ecosystem and policy framework that is friendly for social enterprise development. And in 2014, the central government, because of our strong voice in the market to call for the policy framework for social enterprise incubation, development, ecosystem, and so So the central government in 2014 announced uh, four years of social enterprise action plan. So it, it was the first that kind of uh, ecosystem related social enterprise policy framework in the history here in Taiwan. And then gradually, this action plan identified the different ministry of Taiwan Republic of China, what they have to do if we really want to encourage and motivate the, the social enterprise that can develop very prosperously here in Taiwan. So this is the slide that uh, let you have some brief idea that every year our social enterprise forum, we following along with the social enterprise development, then we change the subject because every year we want to drive different key elements can be well noted because of our forum. And then gradually to classify what kind of resource investment effort should be input into the ecosystem to make the social enterprise and social innovation uh, have a better uh, circumstances to survive, to scale up, and eventually to deliver the positive and clear social impact. In the years of a social uh, enterprise forum, KPMG also uh, committed ourselves to develop a prototype model or a benchmark model, how KPMG in Taiwan can completely develop a clear partnership with a different kind of social enterprise in into our daily operation. Up to now, almost five years already passed, but KPMG right now, every year, <clears throat> we encourage and mobilize our administration department to introduce the social enterprise into our own coffee shop in Taipei 101. Uh, that is uh, our headquarters is based here in Taipei. In 62 floor of Taipei 101, we have our coffee shop called K Coffee. And K Coffee, we already saw that all of the American coffee is a fair trade coffee. And the tea, we also introduced that the ecosystem friendly is, uh, is provided by a social enterprise here in uh, Taipei County. And we also have a, a small sh show shelf that we uh, put a lot of social enterprise product in the shelf and to let our employee to see if they want to buy something, then they can choose the social enterprise. Then we also have a, a catalog and in the catalog we uh, already supply a lot of the social enterprise, the good product and services, the information into the catalog. 
So at a partner, an, an employee, or our visitors, if they want to buy something, it's good to the society and the environment, they can also leverage the information provided in uh, the catalog. And we also uh, engage our chairman and partners if they do want to buy something for uh, <clears throat> as a gift uh, to their friend, their family, or their clients, and they can also leverage a lot of information delivered by our social enterprise service team, uh, because a lot of uh, social enterprise product, uh, their uh, incubation is supported by KPMG. And uh, we do have a lot of uh, activity, for example, like uh, family days, uh, manager meetings, and <clears throat> also we do have uh, some uh, philanthropy actions uh, before the Christmas or so New Year's, and we encourage and engage uh, our employee to donate uh, uh, some specific uh, kind of uh, uh, product and to uh, provide to the uh, low income communities or children uh, and a lot of uh, social enterprise products can be also uh, leveraging and, and become a very important priority and service for those kind of our firm's activity. So eventually every year, combining a lot of our firm's activity and we introduce or embed the social enterprise product and service into our activity, then we do really contribute several million NT dollars, uh, for example, uh, like around uh, uh, 100,000 uh, uh, US dollars uh, investment by chairman, partners, employee, and the coffee shops, the fair trade product, and et cetera. So uh, it is a quite significant number. We don't let the firm to pay for that, but we encourage our employee, partner, an executive uh, to pay for that. So that has been become a very good case. Now the KPMG's case can be uh, duplicated to a lot of uh, uh, big companies in Taiwan. So that is what we can do internally. And another one, we also <clears throat> have a very important uh, input to the policy framework of our central government. Like just I have already mentioned, uh, in 2014, central government of Taiwan, they launched the uh, social enterprise four years action plan. So during uh, 2014 and 2017, fortunately, KPMG's social enterprise service team got awarded uh, the project for providing the incubation uh, uh, support to uh, for building up uh, the friendly ecosystem for social enterprise uh, development. So our social enterprise team, actually, they have already daily uh, engaged with uh, the central government. Actually, social enterprise program uh, is in charge by uh, the uh, small and medium-sized enterprise administration under the Ministry of Economic Affairs. So in 2014 to 2017, uh, the development of the social enterprise here in Taiwan is quite prosperous. <clears throat> and uh, in 2018, the new government of uh, Taiwan, they changed focus on the social enterprise by expanding the resource uh, to uh, to covering a much more wider range of development and enterprises, so-called social enterprise, because it's, uh, no, sorry, social innovation. Actually, social innovation consisting of a lot of uh, scientific, tech, technique, and technology, uh, uh, <clears throat> these kind of element in Taiwan, you know, information technology is a very important part of our industry and uh, uh, the country's the GDP. 
So the open source technology or information technologies application into the social enterprise has become more promising from now on. So the government would like to uh, explore more prosperous development in this area. So in 2018, KPMG provide a very important resource to support the government's uh, political will and the policy in this area. And uh, this year, the central government has already announced the next four year social innovation action plan that is for 2019 to 2022. And this four years, so social innovation action plan, actually uh, the SDG has been already embedded into uh, the action plan. And fortunately, because of uh, the past four years of reputation and trust, and by leveraging KPNG's network and stakeholders relationship, then we has been already become a very important key player in the next four years of social innovation action plan. For Taipei city government, uh, three years ago, actually Taipei city government also like to uh, explore the opportunity to develop the social enterprise that will be something like the city base. And KPMG has been already uh, selected as uh, the key contractor, our social enterprise team, because of our past years of capacity, will provide a very, very good supported resource to social enterprise. So Taipei City government awarded KPMG as the major contractor also to lead uh, this project to move forward. And we also work with one nonprofit organization. Our major belief is that nobody can do it alone. If we want to enhance or enlarge our influence to different kind of stakeholders, you know, KPMG, we are the mainstream accounting firm, one of the big four here in the market. So we are quite easy to get along and, and circulate our information to the big company in the market. But if you want to extend our social influence to the different stakeholders, especially the young talents, you know, these more and more young talents, they are all uh, social purpose driven young talent. And we need to have a new partnership with other and even more nonprofit organization. So for our city government's uh, incubation project for social enterprise, then we work with one or several nonprofit organization and try to extend our uh, information and influence through different channels to the different key stakeholders. That might be very important for supporting the development of a social enterprise. So in this slide, then you see the, how we leverage our own networks and also through the government awarded project for ecosystem incubation for social enterprise and social and innovation enterprise. And by combining with the central government's resource and also the city government, the capital of Taiwan, Taipei city government's network, the different kind of stakeholders are our very important key stakeholder to have a close dialogue on the ecosystem or to identify or introducing the different kind of resources into the market. For example, like investor. You know, government can bring a very good resource, for example, like supporting resources or even uh, some monetary financing to some social enterprise as a subsidy for their development. But they are not so easy to have a direct uh, relationship with a different kind of a stakeholder or a different kind of investor, especially if we want to mobilize the investor to 
try to uh, come to be part of uh, the network of a social enterprise, then you must have uh, some knowledge uh, to pre-select which kind of investor is something like the impact investor, which kind of asset owner or asset management company or venture capital, they do have the face of value driven idea on sustainability investment. And KPMG is a very good, something like a buffer organization. They do have the central government, city government, they do have an idea. They want to identify what kind of investor to join the network and who can support and help. KPMG, we can help them, we can support them. So, by engaging that the right investors and to achieve the final purpose can much, much more efficiently, then you need to have a organization like KPMG. We know who is who. We know the value behind their investment uh, measures. We know the value or idea, some of the key points behind their investment uh, decision-making process. So our major function is as long as we would like to introduce the big company to join the network and to really to see a real big project based on the diversified stakeholder partnership, it is very important to have a like uh, KPMG, we identify who is who, who can be the key player. And then the pitch, the matchmaking, will be much more efficient. So in the last couple of years, a lot of business case in later on, I will introduce two very successful uh, business case for your reference. Then if you don't have that kind of pre-idea, some of uh, uh, the knowledge ahead of uh, the pitch, then you will uh, quite easy to fail. So I'm going to provide you the first case. This case is a quite typical social innovation business case. It happened in the last two years. So the first case we match make, uh, one of uh, the leading telecom communication company as a Taiwan Mobile. Taiwan Mobile has been already committed themselves to the sustainable development in Taiwan for years. They are a company included in Dow Jones Sustainability Index, especially in the World Index and also the Emerging Market, Emerging Market Index. So that means Dow, the Taiwan Mobile has been regarded as uh, one of top global 350 companies uh, they are quite outstanding with their sustainability, environment, social, and governance performance. So they highly welcome innovative idea. And the social enterprise is called Sunny Funder. And this social enterprise, at the very beginning, <clears throat> they are registered uh, social enterprise in another county. And the first time they came to us for help, for consultation, and we advised the Sunny Funder can move from the county to Taipei City because we, are, we do have a lot of resources by leveraging the city government's resource for supporting uh, this company to grow. And Sunny Funder is a social enterprise. They sell what they sell, they sell the service for building a small solar power plant. It is not a big deal. But what is the big deal is they develop the different business model. So the model, based on the partnership between the Sunny Funder and Taiwan Mobile, is they try to identify one MPO in the south of Taiwan. Why in the south of Taiwan? Because there is a much more uh, sunny day in the south of Taiwan because the solar PV power plant 
need sun, <clears throat> sunshine. So they identify one NPO, this nonprofit organization taking care of around 150 psychological problems, uh, the citizen. So nonprofit organization take care of this psychological problem citizen in the south part of Taiwan. And Sunny Funder, talk to this nonprofit organization. Can we have a rate a fund uh, the fundraising for you, but this fundraising is specifically focused on building up a solar PV power plant on your roof. And this solar power plant can generate green power. Then green power can be sold to the Taiwan Power Company. And Taiwan Power Company can pay you the terrain roof uh, every two months to this nonprofit organization. And the Taiwan Power can sign a 20 year contract with this nonprofit organization for the green power generation. So Taiwan Mobile worked with Sunny Funder to support this nonprofit organization and to get the fundraising for this solar PV power plant in the southern part, this nonprofit organization. And Taiwan Mobile also donates certain amount of money. Taiwan Mobile also engaged their supplier, their cell phone supplier, when they sell out one cell phone, then they donate one twenty dollars for the first project. Second dollar donate two twenty dollars for the second project. So Taiwan Mobile also engage their supplier into this innovation project, and they also have a fundraising go to the public. So all of the citizens in Taiwan through a <clears throat> fundraising platform is open for donation. Everyone can donation $550 to this project. So for this project, we have big company, one social enterprise, one nonprofit organization. The key product and service is a solar PV power plant on the roof of this nonprofit organization. Social enterprise, they provide their uh, construction capability, maintenance the, of this solar PV plant, and, and Taiwan Mobile, they engage their supplier and they also support this social enterprise. And the whole project is also support this nonprofit organization to benefit the psychological problems uh, the citizen in the south of Taiwan, but also generate the green power can reduce the carbon emission. No power, no cell phone, no cell phone service. So it combine everything together. And this project has been completed and also generate the green power. And this nonprofit organization started to receive the money from the Taiwan Power Company. So now they move forward for the second project, the size is almost double. The first project is almost five million NT dollars. Actually, that is around uh, 180 southern US dollars. And the second project is almost 10 million NT dollars. It's around uh, 300 southern US dollars. So you can see that this kind of innovation uh, involve technology, climate change, carbon reduction, philanthropy, and also the uh, social well to take care of the uh, uh, disadvantaged uh, citizen in the South. And social enterprise can leveraging this kind of uh, project can be can grow up can have a better capability to handle much more bigger projects. Taiwan Mobile is something like what the talk for their corporate social responsibility. And if this kind of project can be followed by the, uh, the next, uh, something like a social return on investment, 
and it can deliver the social impact assessment outcome uh, results and that will be very, very helpful for the future communicating with some other stakeholders. The next case is a social enterprise uh, collaboration with the small and medium size. Uh, <clears throat> The small and medium sized company is called Luisa Coffee. It's something like a Starbucks coffee. It's a chain store. Now they have more than 300 shops in Taiwan. At the very beginning, they sell is something like affordable coffee, but with high quality. And this social enterprise is called Pure Milk. Pure Milk is funded in 2013, just only four years old. And the initial funder, actually, uh, he is a, a, a cattle vet. He take care of the cow to generate the milk. Uh, but uh, because of the small uh, farmer, they don't have a quite good uh, retailer market channel to sell the high quality milk. And uh, the initial funder, uh, they decided to support this small farmer uh, to deliver the high quality milk to the market. And this collaboration between the pure milk with Louisa Coffee is, you know, the coffee shop always need to have milk. But if the social enterprise delivering the high quality milk, but also have uh, can generate the very, very good positive social impact. And why not we put them together? And Louisa Coffee's, uh, their president, uh, general manager is a highly support uh, to the pure milk. And then they even provide a lot of, for example, like the logistic uh, fleet to support uh, the pure milk logistics need. And they also leverage the pure milk product to develop another kind of series new products. And this, the, the new uh, quite promising uh, coffee shop uh, chain store now is highly welcome in uh, Taiwan's market. They grow up very fast and pure milk, uh, their revenue in the last two years also uh, grow very fast, almost double every year. So we can see that this kind of uh, collaboration has already impact into the supply chain, but much more close uh, collaboration between the social enterprise with a mainstream uh, chain store can really uh, deliver an amazing outcome. So this is where will be my last two uh, slides. As I have already mentioned, our KPMG's platform, we provide a lot of service. And now at the very beginning, we thought that we can become a very important influential thought leaders for advocacy on the better ecosystem for social innovation. And we make it happen. So now in our daily operation of our social enterprise service team, we engage the, the central governments, uh, the Ministry of Economic Affairs, engage the city governments in Taipei, engage the investor, engage the consumer, engage the retailer, engage our CSR clients, uh, but also internal employee. And in the past five years, we do have already uh, establish our volunteer club that is a specific uh, service uh, provided to uh, the social enterprise. So based on uh, my previous uh, slides, this is the key takeaway. I would like to highlight that uh, as long as we do have our internal executives commitment and support, then we need to uh, build up a systematic way for engaging different kinds of stakeholders. So at the very be beginning, if we want to drive the public-private collaboration in social innovation, we should first identify who is who, 
what kind of role that each stakeholder can play, then we can clearly position themselves, position ourselves, and try to key roles in the ecosystem can really function. Second, if we want to motivate the different stakeholders to devote in social innovation, then we should observe uh, their current status and go and their pain points. If we want to make the pitch effective working, then we need to know each stakeholder's the pain points and try to have their pain point can really work out in a very short period of time by innovative model. So that is very important that we need to identify whether we have some very important and effective incentive to mobilize them. So for example, like right now, we have uh, a so-called buying power program in the ecosystem. Now KPMG is uh, supporting uh, our central government by uh, through this buying power program because we can recognize uh, the big enterprise, the small and medium sized enterprise, and the social enterprise. What successful business case has been already made it happen by this company and leveraging the buying power award, then they can get more and better uh, recognition in the society. So we need to build up a, social, a robust social innovation ecosystem. Uh, nobody can do it alone. So we should uh, be ready for have a multi-stakeholder partnership at day one for driving this kind of initiative. So now I'm also in charge of uh, uh, the sustainability service in Asia Pacific. So highly welcome that uh, we KPMG can have a much more wider uh, role to play. We are uh, willing uh, to be your partner. We are willing to be part of the solution. I believe that we are also very uh, uh, pleased to have any opportunity to share our ca case in Asia Pacific. So that's all my presentations. Thank you so much for your listening. If you have a, any question, I will be pleased to answer. Thank you very much, Dr. Huang. That was a really informative presentation. I would like to invite all uh, participants of the webinar to please submit your questions on the console if you haven't already, and I will relay them to Dr. Huang to, <clears throat> to answer. We have some questions coming in already. So if I may relay the first question to Dr. Huang. What kinds of partnerships forged with uh, the various stakeholders, including the Taipei City government, have been the most successful in your experience? And can you share the lessons learned from those initiatives? Okay, I, I'm not sure whether I have in my uh, previous sharing uh, the uh, the partnership with uh, the uh, the government. Uh, any further thing you need me to verify, but I can provide uh, further supplementary information. Uh, for Taipei City government, uh, they do have uh, one because now the the city government or local government has been already uh, mobilized by the uh, central government's action plan, no matter that is for the social enterprise four-year action plan or social innovation four-year action plan. Uh, the local government has been already encouraged uh, to uh, release uh, the government awarded project for incubating uh, the social enterprise or social innovation enterprise. So based on our previous capability, uh, for example, like we do have a thought leadership and advocacy and, and uh, forum, and we also have a lot of successful uh, business case by uh, pitching uh, the social enterprise and investor or big company like uh, uh, Taiwan Mobile case or the uh, Louisa Coffee's case. So the central government or local government 
or always a highly welcome KPMG can become their partner. So when they release that kind of project, and we are invited to bid for that kind of project. So that is something like a tender and, and, and bidding process. But after uh, we submit the proposal and they do have a, a reviewing committee, and uh, eventually uh, we are selected as the best partner for Taipei city government uh, to conduct uh, their social enterprise the incubation project. So that kind of uh, partnership is based on uh, the government awarded uh, project. Thank you, Dr. Huang, for sharing that. Uh, the next question that we have among, uh, that has been submitted uh, is about how do you ensure that there is adequate knowledge sharing and risk management across the various stakeholders in different sectors? Okay, this is a very uh, important uh, question. Uh, according to KPMG capability, we always keep in mind uh, the risk issue. So when we want to develop a concrete and solid uh, partnership with different kind of uh, stakeholder, even that is for the government agency, for example, like the Ministry of Economic Affairs in central government and Taipei city government, or uh, recently we just conducted a project with uh, in the southern part of Taiwan is a county government. And if we want to engage in the social enterprise or some other nonprofit organization, internally, we KPMG has uh, our partners, the risk management system. So we can provide uh, some of the background information about this organization, public or private or nonprofit organization. And our system will track whether this kind of organization uh, or agency in the past, the KPMG's partnership or engagement, uh, some uh, engagement projects, uh, whether there is any potential risk for those kind of uh, uh, organization. So we do have an internal risk management system uh, at at day one. So that is very important. But I don't think that a lot of organizations, they do have that kind of a risk management system. So we do have, for example, like we got to submit all of the detailed information according to our system requirement, and then everything got to submit uh, by our uh, the risk officer in our advisory service, and then also should be uh, approved by our uh, risk assessment had in uh, in the whole firm and then we need to document all of the documents should be digitalized in our risk internal risk management system and so that is uh, uh, the first one second one is you are right so you are different kind of sector that the partnership risk is very important so in our uh, consultation and advisory service and incubation system, the risk management is very important, no matter for the nonprofit organization and social enterprise or big company. For example, like when uh, the, the pure milk, this is a social enterprise, when they grow up very fast, uh, you can see that their production volume must also uh, increase very fast. And how about milk is for people to drink? So that the, uh, a lot of food safety issues should be taken into account uh, during production, you know, logistic, and even uh, after sale. So we uh, provide a lot of advisory or by, or even introducing some good resource internally or externally to those social enterprise. And then always uh, KPMG can become something like a, a, a risk whistleblower to those uh, social enterprise. So risk is really, really the first priority for us if we want to uh, build up a very healthy, uh, successful 
business case. Uh, but for big company, you know, they do have their own risk management. For the investor, their risk assessment is always also quite well developed. So normally we put a lot of risk emphasize, emphasize on the social and en enterprise side or NGO side because they are not quite familiar with about the risk management. So that is the current our structure and key focus regarding us the risk, uh, risk issues uh, in this kind of uh, initiative. Thank you very much, Dr. Huang. That's a very thorough answer to, to a very important issue. Uh, we have time for one last question, which has come in. Uh, and the question is, what can conscious private investors do in lesser developed markets where the intermediaries or NPOs or social enterprises are less prevalent? Excuse me, could you please repeat it again? Sure. The question is, what can conscious private investors do in less developed markets where there may be less number of intermediaries or NPOs or social enterprises? Okay. So you mean uh, that the uh, uh, conscious investor, they are int interested in this kind of investment, but in the less developed community or society, uh, there is no enough uh, that kind of uh, a target uh, to invest or to support. Yeah, this kind of a situation also happened five, six years ago. So KPMG is not the only one for doing what we are doing now. Actually, there is a couple, uh, the conscious investor, or especially impact investor. So right now, we do have a, a few, not a lot, but a few impact investors. Five years ago, what they do, they also thought social enterprise, social innovation is a very good vehicle for addressing the social and environmental problem. So uh, they started to build up the uh, platform for dialogue. So one of uh, the uh, social in impact investors, uh, they developed uh, something like a social enterprise forum. So they have, uh, uh, for example, like uh, every two months, there is a one, two hours of forum. And they invite, for example, like the opinion leaders academic professors or some very few social enterprise uh, come to the forum and they have uh, at the very beginning they even uh, they are the main speaker themselves because they are they cannot find out more speaker uh, but they build up this kind of uh, platform and uh, so they uh, stimulate a lot of a dialogue around the social enterprise social innovation how about the foreign uh, overseas is a successful case. So they build up that kind of uh, awareness uh, momentum at the very beginning. And it works. And we see we, we see that uh, in the series of foreign and more and more young talent, more and more social entrepreneur, more and more mainstream uh, business, and they join that kind of forum. And uh, then you can see that the bigger momentum and higher consensus is coming and everybody say yeah we gotta do this we gotta do that and now uh we really have a more social enterprise and this impact investor they just gradually to ease this kind of activity because it, when it become a mainstream uh, no need for them to keep emphasizing or keep supporting that kind of uh uh, uh forum so highly highly suggest that the uh the conscious investor can start it at uh, to build up a dialogue, a forum. So uh, once a month or once two months or once a quarter and try to uh, build up and engage that the interest stakeholder in this network. And then everybody can work together to think about how to have a better or, or more brainstorming to see what they can do together based from that. Great. Thank you so much for that answer, Dr. Huang. I think it's very clear that a conscious investor or an impact investor can also take an important role in catalyzing 
the building of such an ecosystem where it is less developed. We are unfortunately out of time. There are a few more questions online which we will relay to Dr. Huang on email so that we can get some brief comments from him in writing, uh, which we will then append to a uh, events post that we will have on the ABPN website for the webinar today. This webinar is also recorded, so in one week's time, we will also post the recording on our website. Thank you everybody for your participation and thank you Dr. Huang for this very informative presentation. And I would like to invite all of you to visit ABPN's website um, to check out the other policy webinars that have been presented in recent past. Uh, in the meantime, if there are any other questions, please feel free to contact us at policy at avpn.asia. Thank you very much again, Dr. Huang, and thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you all. Bye.